what we're going to do is push the dial in and you can see we've now got uh, some interesting screens up so each of these things do something different what I'm doing at the moment is leveling the bed so we just go to prepare and you can see this auto home I've selected that push it and we'll go over there and you can see the well you probably couldn't then but it did move and it's now gone to auto home so the um, bed hasn't been set I know the nozzle is pushing down on the glass at this point so I will now turn off the power supply and we're going to go in and do a bit of uh, proper leveling this is the initial one I'll just zoom back out and my favorite uh, piece of paper <laughs> Well, actually one of many you just cut up an A4 into different sections make them nice and handy to use and then the idea is you slide it under so that the glass and the nozzle are basically the nozzle is pushing down on the piece of paper on the glass it's when you can feel the movement uh, when you go across you can just feel the nozzle just touching the um, top of the paper you know it's set correct so we'll do that now and I'll show you a, an easier way to do all this later now I've popped the paper underneath to give you an idea and as you can see it's as loose as all heck um, it's not doing anything and I've got the power turned off so that means I can actually move things around a little bit now because I've got it set for auto home the nozzle should be touching the plate and as you can see it's definitely not so you've got underneath four little screws on each of the corners just think along the terms righty tightsy lefty loosey so in other words if you turn it right the uh, printer bed itself will come up if you turn it the other way left the printer bed will go down so that's the easiest way to remember it so we're obviously needing a bit of um, a bit of pressure put on this so I turn it to the left and we're just starting just starting you may or may not hear that And that's about all you need so you can pull your paper out slide it under without any great force that should be now set pretty good now you'll notice I don't have heat on at the moment I don't have anything happening and that's a reason I just want to do the initial um, leveling once I've got the initial leveling then I'm going to use some special software I've got which I'll have a download link available for you and it'll make this a lot easier so the next thing we do is we will just simply slide the bed across into position and as you can see here that's that's tight so that's telling you again we are physically dragging the nozzle across the um, glass plate so again uh, we need to sort of adjust all this so in this instance we need to make the plate go down so we have to basically tighten up the nozzle by going to the right or we'll tighten up the, uh, the screw I should say and we now get a and again we're just touching right now as you can see and that's basically all we need to do there now I'm going to move across to the other side and uh, I'll probably have to reposition the camera I think yeah there we go we'll do that that'll do and I leave the paper underneath it and the reason I leave the paper underneath um, I know this is a tight bed and when you get to the other side you can see to slide that under is a bit of a pain so again we need to drop the bed on this side down so that means we need to turn it to the right and this is actually very it needs a heap of turning this one okay we got him this is the very first time it's been done now I know um, you need a heated bed to get more accurate levelling but we will get that shortly and uh, maybe a fraction more and this is one of the big mistakes that people make is they don't level the bed properly now you can see I'm having a bit of difficulty sliding that under well I've got to drop the bed or the glass down just a tad more because I've gone too far 
I want to be able to slide the paper under Okay, we're just under now and adjust. That's too far, bringing back. And again, it's just so it just touches. That's a bit too much. That'll do there. And we just slide forward again to the corner. And exactly the same thing. I should have actually had the paper underneath then, but I didn't. And again, I've just pushed it under. And you can see she's uh, quite tight, so we need to again turn to the right. And of course, the right lowers the glass bed down. And that's about right. Now I'm going to bring this out and just slide it across to the middle to see what we've got in the way of it's actually not too bad it's not bad this is actually a good uh, sheet of glass I'm quite happy with this the last couple of printers I've had the glass has been um, nice and level the very first uh, Creality I had which is a CR-10S uh, had a bit of a warp in the glass so I sanded the top down using a power sander and uh, it works really nice now but with these sort of um, level ones you don't have to worry about it so we've got all this done we're on to the next stage so what I've done to make it uh, nice and easy to do a bit of leveling on the Creality CR-10 is I've modified some code I'll have a link below uh, to where I got it from we go print and here I've got a CR-10 bed-level so we press that you can notice now that the bed is showing 60 degrees it's going to preheat the bed to 60 degrees I personally print around the 210 mark because I use PLA plus the temperature over here will also go to 210 degrees we'll wait for it to heat up and uh, I'll show you what the actual software does this is a really easy way to level your CR-10 uh, series of 3D printers and it's just simply a matter of putting a G-code on there onto your actual SD card now I've actually modified this a little bit so it's a little different to the one that you'll find on the um, on my link below uh, I will also link back to the particular one I'm using which I've modified myself in case you prefer to use that one but basically all you've got to do with mine you turn it on select it it automatically heats up to 60 degrees which is what I run the bed at it will also run the temperature on the nozzle at 210 which again I print a lot of PLA plus and 210 seems to be the optimum temperature for the varieties I've been using so that's uh, as I say obviously set for my personal printer but again you can use it you can also modify it quite easily now once the temperature has reached 210 on the nozzle and 60 degrees on the bed it's going to auto home then it's going to move back 10 mil off the X and the Y axis so that'll be our point in there for leveling it'll move across to this side again I've set it for 290 rather than 300 same up the back 290 and across on the back there so we're actually doing a 290 square it'll also pop into the middle and do the final set in there now I've got this set for 15 seconds um, and I think that's plenty of time so basically what you're going to have it's just homed it's now going to lift in a second um, gives you three seconds and there she goes and it'll now drop into position and we can now do our necessary adjustments And that beat gives you a five second warning to tell you it's going to move and there she goes now I've already um, done the leveling of course it just makes it easier to show you how this thing actually working so basically as you can see I just pop the paper underneath first it just makes it so much easier than um, trying to position the paper after you've got the, actually got the uh, printer in or printhead in position I should say the nozzle 
And again, five second warning, it's now going to go up the back. So, grand total of 15 seconds from the moment it actually gets into its spot. And that's basically all you need. Once you've got your um, uh, bed level, there's really not a lot that has to be done um, on each uh, sort of session. There we go down here. Same sort of thing. And I'll just loosen that up a little bit there. Yeah, that's done. Five second warning again. And we go to the last uh, spot. Loose 10 millimeter on each of the changes, so it doesn't get caught on the binder clips or anything, which is very handy. And there we go. Same sort of thing here again. We just adjust him so that we get a bit of bit of grab on the paper. Five second warning, off into the middle, and there she goes. Now, you've got to admit that is nice and easy. That beats moving things around by hand uh, so much, so much quicker. And there we go. Perfect. So I'm happy with that, and there she goes. Uh, five second warning, it'll move back to home, and uh, basically you're ready to print. And there you go. So how hard was that? I mean, that has got to be the easiest way to do bed leveling using semi-automatic um, G-code software and readily available on the internet. As I said, check my links below. One will be direct to the original uh, source code. The second one will be the one that I've modified myself. Now that you've got your printer all ready to start printing, all that's left is popping in some filament. Now this little tiny hole, which is up the top here, right there, that's where the filament goes. So you think just lining up a bit of filament and popping it through would be easy. Well, you've got to release the mechanism and pushing you'll often find that it doesn't go straight through. Now, there is an easy way of doing this. Okay, um, see how we go I've got him to try and do a diagram and explain why I load the filament the way I do we'll start off with uh, a spool which um, will sort of cheat a wee bit we'll just sort of do a bit of a circle so if you can imagine there's your spool now filament will either come from the top or you'll come from the bottom but either way it's got a natural curve and here's a bit of filament to sort of show you in detail so if you have an extruder which is sitting say here and definitely out of proportion and we have a Bowden tube connector here and we have the tube inserted running off on an angle like so as you're trying to feed through the the little hole on the side with your little thumb grippy thingy over there the tensioner and you've got inside a feed which comes across something like this um, so the tube comes through here you've got your wheel tensioning device etc etc the natural tendency is to either curve upwards so that it does not align correctly with the hole on the other side here so what the idea is is to basically try and straighten out the uh, filament the best you can so it will align with that physical hole so the way i found it is to or the best way i found i should say to do it is to simply grab your filament cut on an angle don't cut square cut on an angle and that gives you a bit of a better chance for it to line up with that um, hole um, on the other side of the extruder i've also found that believe it or not by bending just a little bit to try and straighten it out the best you physically can makes a big difference when you're actually feeding it through the extruder so you try and straighten out your bit of plastic so that it's uh, got a bit of a, you know, a bit of a straightness to it so you're taking away that sort of curved look there so you're actually getting a, um, a straighter piece and you'll find that that will feed a lot easier 
through the mechanism so it'll go straight through pop out the other side and make life really easy for you whereas the other one if you try and feed it through you got a bit of curvature and it will not align uh, correctly with the um, Bowden tube connector on the other side it just gets thrown around the gears sort of just throw it backwards and forwards so that's a little hint that I've learnt and uh, it works really well now if you've leveled your bed correctly and everything is set perfect you should be able to run a print so let's give it a go I've got some uh, 3D fillies it's the new PLA plus a grey and we'll feed it in and see what happens okay let's set a print now um, uh, see what we're going to get I've got a already copied a model across there it is and she's underway so we'll get to see what the first print will come up like now the first print is about to start and uh, what we're looking for is hopefully a decent uh, outline now the very first layer that goes down will determine whether the uh, print is going to stick or not now I treat my glass always with PVA glass uh, I treat my glass with PVA glue I've done a video on that for those that are interested and I find it works really well so here we go a bit of white popped out that's uh, that's the uh, glue of the um, that's the PLA that uh, Creality use on their tests so we should see this popping over to grey shortly and there we go look at that perfect absolutely perfect line see if I can get it in a bit more for you there we go look at that and that's telling you that the very first layer is spot on so getting the bed level is absolutely critical in getting a good print now you can see this area where my finger is has gone from white to grey so that's the new filament uh, feeding through this is a rather interesting print for the first one uh, I've chosen a, um, a rearing horse not too big it's 120 mil high it's around about five hours for the print to uh, complete so we'll let it go and I'll come back and have a look and see what, it, uh, what it's done. Yeah, a little bit further into the first layer. And that's looking dead level. So that's what you're looking for. If you get your first layer down, chances are the print's going to be spot on when it's completed. And there we are. That took uh, 5 hours and 40 minutes for anyone that's interested. And this is the first print of the Creality CR-10 that I've got. And as you can see, that is a mighty impressive looking print. It really is nice. Can't be faulted for the first print, that's for certain. You can find this uh, little model on Thingiverse, so anyone that wants to print it out, uh, that's where you'll get it. Leveling makes a huge difference to the quality of your prints. So spend that little bit of extra time and as you can see it's working perfect. <laughs>